Now let's tease out each muscle and look at it a little more precisely in terms of what it's doing to create motion. First, the extensor digitorum communis. In our first course, we talked about the four insertions of the extensor digitorum communis. Well, it's not technically just the insertion of the EDC. But think about it this way. The first one, the sagittal bands, is the strongest and most primary influence. As these insertions move distally, they have a decreasing contribution of extensor digitorum communist power. Let me say that again. I think that's an important point. As these insertions move distally throughout the finger, there is a lesser contribution of power from the extensor digitorum communis. The further away from the sagittal bands, the less the EDC influence. We talked about how the sagittal bands limit the proximal excursion of the extensor digitorum communis. And that means that before any power can be transmitted through the central slip into the dorsal apparatus, the power here first must occur. So the extensor digitorum communis is usually busy at the metacarpal phalangeal joint and therefore doesn't have a great deal left to offer for full interphalangeal joint extension. This is the way that I think about it. In this schematic drawing, the solid lines represent what I consider to be a primary influence by the extensor digitorum communis. Once the communist power moves across the sagittal band fibers, this now becomes, in my opinion, a secondary influence. There's a direct influence to the central slip insertion, and via the conjoined lateral bands, there's also influence to the terminal tendon insertion. But as we know, these fibers are not moving separately, and therefore, the primary role of the extensor digitorum in the, in the dorsal apparatus, in my view, is to actually provide tension throughout the dorsal apparatus, making it easier for the small intrinsic muscles to contract and affect excursion. This is just a schematic illustration. Remember, the red uh, suggests extensor digitorum communist contribution. The blue is interosseous and the green is lumbrical. You can see when these colors are a bit translucent and overlapping that they indeed all blend together and work together. When the metacarpal phalangeal joint is flexed and therefore one assumes the extensor digitorum communis is not active, it is the flexion position itself that creates tension of the EDC into the dorsal apparatus. So there's active extension via the central slip when the NP joint is, extension, is in extension, but when we flex the NP joint, there's passive extension. In this photograph in the upper right, my hand is pulling on the extensor digitorum communis, obviously on a cadaver specimen. You can see that the metacarpal phalangeal joint is extended to neutral, but there's no power transmitted out to fully extend the PIP and or DIP joints. So in the absence of any muscle tension, if I were to pull on the extensor digitorum communis, I only hyperextend the MP joint. We see this, obviously, in ulnar palsy when there are no innervated interosseous or lumbrical muscles. We do see some PIP extension because it's connected, but we certainly do not see full. And the DIP comes along for the ride with the slight PIP joint extension. Now, if the PIP joint is stiff from some type of trauma, what we always see in the clinic is associated hyperextension of the MP joint. This hyperextension occurs because we cannot effectively transmit the power to the PIP joint because of its stiffness. It has resistance. 
This, unfortunately, prevents any power from being directed to the PIP joint that's going to be affected. So what we'd like to do is not allow this MP joint hyperextension and drive not only the interosseous power for IP extension but also the EDC to the PIP joint, not allowing the MP joint to hyperextend. Now during finger flexion, the extensor digitorum communis actually provides an eccentric contraction and it's sort of like it lets the metacarpal phalangeal joint down into flexion. It, it allows it to flex because there's flexor tension. It, the flexor tension gets it started.